For months, thousands of Israelis have been demanding that their government do something to bring those held captive in Gaza home. And yet again, a heavy police presence. And protesters arrested. But this time, there was a glimmer of hope for some. Just 24 hours earlier, they listened to US President Joe Biden call for an end to the war, reassuring them Hamas's capabilities have been greatly reduced and can no longer attack Israel. He urged both sides to take the three-phase deal. Our partner is Biden and not the government of Israel, to our sorrow. So we have to come here, and I come here every week to save the hostages, uh, to finalize the, the war, to bring them home, and to get the new elections, because we have to save Israel also, not only the hostages. And this government will take us to hell. While the US presented it as an Israeli proposal, many say their government is incapable, accusing Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of sabotaging deals for his own political survival, and far-right ministers advocating the resettling of Gaza. The extremists in the Netanyahu government are opposing this deal. They have allowed the minority extremists to attack President Biden. They want the war to go on for an indefinite period of time. These people would sacrifice even the captives. Gantz, Eisencourt, Gallant. This is your last chance to make sure that Netanyahu doesn't destroy this deal. I hear your voices. Tell the citizens that you support this deal. And that includes putting an end to this war. The ultra-nationalist ministers Itamar Ben-Gvir and Bezlel Smotrich have reacted angrily by threatening to quit if Benjamin Netanyahu goes ahead with this latest ceasefire proposal. A move that could lead to the dissolving of the coalition government as the Prime Minister tries hard to cling on to power. While thousands of protesters gathered in Tel Aviv and other cities, opposition leader Yair Lapid slammed the government, calling it the worst and most wanted in Israel's history promising to back Netanyahu, though, if he accepts the deal. But Netanyahu is still insisting on getting rid of Hamas before he signs a full ceasefire agreement. Depending on who you speak to, some will blame Israel for not securing a ceasefire deal since November. Others will blame Hamas for changing terms and conditions. And international pressure doesn't guarantee that a deal will even go through. But for now, though... The protesters and families of those held captive have this message. Sara Khairat, Al Jazeera, Amman. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.